can catch up with each other. Who knows, right? Uh, well, welcome to Prospect Street and to our service this morning. Um, and we're going to start off by doing what? Greeting one another. Let's do it in the name of Jesus Christ. <coughs> And, um, well, if the praise team would come up, I'm not doing that too, but <laughs> no, I'll sing from back here. Let's praise the Lord this morning. Yeah. 
Isn't it awesome to have Norm back with us? So <coughs> he doesn't even look um, like anything happened to him at all until you talk to him, and then it's a little bit of a giveaway. So uh, it'll be a while till he has a voice, but it's so good to have him back with us today. Um, we want to continue to remember George. I haven't had an update um, yet, so I don't know if anybody else has. I saw him uh, Wednesday. I think it was. I don't know. Every day blends into the next. Um, but we want to continue to remember him and Lucille. Don't forget we have a Thanksgiving Eve service on Wednesday at 6 o'clock, 45 minutes, and you'll be out of here. Uh, choir members are expected so that you can then stay for choir practice, right? Oh, no, you said it wasn't mandatory. Well, I'm making it mandatory. There you go. Hey, there we are. So, uh, but um, yes, come and uh, let us remember in our hearts that we give thanks to God for everything that we have. I ask for travel mercies for Christiana. She's going to be driving out uh, to see Hannah. So, um, and I get to look after my grandpuppy. So um, I guess it's a win-win, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, let's go to the Lord today in prayer. Oh, Lord, our God, we come before your throne today. And we want to focus on you and you alone. We want to be able to give our whole hearts to you and let the thanks just pour from our hearts for all that we have, for all that we are. For when we give ourselves to you, giving in other ways is a part of who we are. You gave everything you had, your son, so that we could have eternal life. Lord, we lift up today all those who do not have thanks in their heart, that find it difficult to be thankful for anything. No matter what the reason, Lord, we just lift them to you. We think of those who are our shut-ins, those in the hospital, the families of those who have lost loved ones, and particularly coming up to this um, time of holidays with Thanksgiving and Christmas, it makes it a little harder. Help them to focus, Lord, on all the things that they can be thankful for. Lord, we lift up to you all those who are abused and oppressed in the world. Those who do not have enough to eat or drink. Who don't live like we do. And struggle just to survive. And Lord, as families gather, we pray that you will be with each family, that they can overlook maybe years of fighting or not talking, and be thankful that they have family and that they can be together. Lord, we lift up the prayer that you taught us as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen
If you are able, please stand for the reading of the scripture today, <coughs> which comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 10 through 15. <coughs> oh, please be seated. <coughs> I just now saw that I messed this up. Dave, I want you to come and sing before I read the scripture. Yes, yes. This is why I don't own a smartphone, because I'm not intelligent enough to run one. Mm. He leadeth me, O oh blessed thought, O oh word with heaven. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
something new. The other voices you heard on that recording were him. He did all those background voices and then sang with that. Isn't that awesome? Um, he tried something new, and I would say, Dave, that was a very good experiment. Try it again. Uh, that thank you for sharing. So now, let us stand, and I'm really going to read the scripture from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 10 through 15. Now, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, Men will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers, for you, their hearts will go out because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. This is the word of God from long ago for the people of God today. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. <coughs> Let us pray. Oh Lord, we thank you for this time of the year. And as we celebrate Thanksgiving... We turn our hearts towards you, for we cannot be thankful without you because you provide everything that we have and everything that we need. So thank you, God. Help us to focus for a few moments as we hear your word to us this day. In your name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> we have a lot to be thankful for, don't we? Let's name some things for which you are thankful. What are some things you're thankful for? Health. health. Voice? <laughs> oh, yes, health. Yes, surgery. Gary. That is beautiful. We're thankful for Gary Red too. Yes. Of the family? Yes. Friends and friends that have become family. You heard some of that. Water. Yes. Clean water. Absolutely. So many places in the world do not have clean water. Food. Food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good one, Mike. Yes. Many things. Yes. In spite of its failures, right? Jobs. Yes. Now, I know there's a lot more that we can be thankful for. There's so much more. Nobody said Jesus. Remember, Jesus is always the answer when you're asked a question in church, but that's okay. Gary Red comes close, <laughs> you know. <coughs> we have so much to be thankful for. All our needs are met, and many of our wants also. We're really not lacking, and yet we want more. You know how I know that? People are constantly going out and buying things or looking on the Internet for things to buy, and packages are arriving in the mail. But if God's grace is really sufficient for all our needs... Why do we complain and want? The problem is that we are not content in our hearts. In God's abundant economy, this is how God works, 
The world is provided enough of everything for everyone. But we have not learned to share with others. Now, you may say, but I share what I have, which is true. But in the world as God's people, we do not share. And that's why we have a percentage of the world who is so rich. Today's scripture says that when we give in the right way, we can naturally give expressions of thanks to God. And I know right now you're saying, wait a minute, last week was Consecration Sunday and we talked about giving. Surely you're not going to talk about giving again, are you? Well, yes, I am, but in the way of thanksgiving. To give thanks, we praise God, right? It's an expression of love. And when we're talking about giving, we're not only talking about treasures or monetary value, things that we have. We're talking about our time, time that we can give to God in service in many, many different ways. We talked about that last week. And also using the gifts and talents that God gave us. And we all have one. Remember um, Francis's poem on talents? Thanks giving or giving thanks. God supplies every person with seeds, as this scripture said, which are gifts, which are talents. They are resources that are to be cultivated, invested, and grown. Do you remember the parable of the talents? How the, the servant who was given one talent buried it? That's not what we're supposed to do with the gifts God's given us. They're not to be hidden or devoured for personal gain or thrown away or denied. But these gifts are to be used and they are to become fruitful. And we are to share and give away what is our fruit so that all may enjoy it. We are to be generous with our giving. And the scripture says, give not from what we have left over, but from our abundance and plenty. When I was a teenager and started to, um, I, I had a job, <coughs> mom and dad told me, now you've got to start putting some money in church. But they never, ta never taught me about tithing. And so I would come home on a Saturday. You couldn't work then uh, weekdays. You could only work on a Saturday. And I would come home and I would take my five pounds and one penny. That's how much I got. And I would think, okay, I've got this much for this and this much for this. And those things were all for me, by the way. I just don't have to tell you what they were. But they were all for me, you can imagine. And then what I had left over usually like the penny, but then I'd felt guilty, so I'd throw in a few more pennies, that would go in the collection plate on Sunday. That's not how God's abundance works, and it's not how God expects us to give. But this scripture tells us that as we give generously and serve God, other people are blessed. And then they praise God and thank God. And in turn, God blesses us again. And so the cycle continues. And so does thanksgiving. Listen to the words of 2 Corinthians 9, 6. Just before our passage today. Whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Here's the heart of all that. It is impossible to outgive God. I've had so many incidences in our lives, especially when we were first married and um, Dominic came along. I didn't work and because uh, I wanted to stay home and um, 
Tim didn't make very much, but every time we had a bill due, there was money there. Or people would just drop things off, food and different things that we needed. Some meat for the freezer. We didn't have a lot, but we had everything we needed. And I have to remind myself about that sometimes, right? We have everything we need. So today, expressions of thanks to God actually come from our giving. And remember, I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about every time we give something, a hug, a smile, a note, a phone call, anything that we do. We express thanks to God, our generosity, our surrender, and our obedience produce that. So here are nine ways that our giving expresses thanks to God. Sure, he loves our worship. He loves it when we say, thank you, God, and we praise God. But day in, day out, it's what we give away that expresses thanks to God. So here's some nine ways that we should give. The first one is simply be who you are created to be. Don't try to be someone else. Keep it simple. Give what God directs you to do in, t in, to do in your time, your service, and your generosity. Don't listen to what anybody else says. Be in touch with God. Many of us, it's easy to say, oh, I'm going to give this much money, but how about our time? I want time to do my own thing, to spend time with my family. After all, I'm owed that, right? All of us think that way, but we can all find some time to help someone else. It's not hard, and each one of us can do it. We make our lives too complicated. We try to do too much. Live a simpler life. That's how we can give. And that's how we express thanks to God. Number two, whatever you do, do in Christ's name. Colossians 3.17 says this, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So in everything that we do, if we do it in Christ's name, it's an expression of thanks to God. In other words, nothing that we do or say is about us. It's always about God. Do you live like your life that way? Boy, I thinking this morning, man, I really screw up my life many times. <laughs> the third way of expressing thanks to God in our giving is systematically. I didn't think about that very much. But 1 Corinthians 16.2 says this. On the first day of the week, set aside a sum of money. Now, it's not always money we need to set aside. And it's not what we have left over at the end of the week or the month, but the prescribed amount that God and you have agreed upon. Make it a habit, part of your routine. I know, you develop a habit, and boy, it's easy to break that, isn't it? Very easy. But it should be part of our routine just like paying our bills, saying I'm thankful for Gary Red, <laughs> saying thank you to God, or taking a shower. That's how systematically our giving, all of it should be. Number four, liberous, liberally or generously. When it comes to kids and grandkids, it's pretty easy to do that, isn't it? For myself, I'm thinking, 
oh, I want to help Noel out with the wedding this way. I want to get this, and maybe I can do this, and maybe I can do this. And then I remember that when I was praying about what, how I could help her with the wedding, I, God and I had this conversation, and he said, $1,000. And I thought, all right, I can do that. And I already have. So now, why am I saying, well, I could buy this, and I could buy this, and I could... It's never ending, is it? We can do that with our own children, but what about the rest of God's children in the world? The shoeboxes last week were an example of that. There were lots of them. How are you helping someone else during this holiday season? Are you giving liberally and generously of your time to help someone who may need it? Luke 6, 28 says this, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Let me explain that verse. When people went into Jerusalem, they had to change money. Or if they went to buy something, things would be measured out. Do you remember they used to do that in the store? If you bought a pound of something, they would actually put it on the scale and weigh out a pound. Today, you just buy something in a packet. But people began to cheat. And, you know, when you're cooking, if you get a cup of flour or sugar or whatever... Okay, uh, let's use um, brown sugar, because that's always hard to get out of the packet, right? And you put it in that cup measure, and you have to press it down so it fills all the little holes. That's what Paul was saying here. When you're measuring something out, don't cheat anyone, but press it down. Put as much as you can and make it a full cup. And when you give of yourself like that, the blessings will come falling into your lap. And it's so true. In other words, we get as good as we give. Number five, sacrificially. How many of us give until it hurts us? I've heard many people talk about that. And there's not very many times in my life that I've actually given sacrificially where it has hurt me. How about you? We actually give out of our abundance. And yet the scripture tells us that sh we should give sacrificially. When we studied Paul, I would say he gave sacrificially, right? He suffered. And there were times he went hungry. And he didn't have clothes. He knew how to give. And out of that, he expressed thanks to God. Now, I'm not saying give away everything you have. That's not what I'm saying. But we need to think about how we give. Number six is cheerfully. 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says, Give not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. How many times I've gone to do something and thought, oh, I really don't want to go out of the house today. <laughs> I just want to stay home and cuddle up in my blanket and watch one of my favorite shows on TV. You know, turn on with my remote the little fireplace that I have and just feel cozy and warm because I've worked hard and I deserve that. How many times I'm reluctant or feel that I have to do something because I signed up for it. The nativity, the live nativity is coming up. The sign-ups are down in the lobby, and they've been there for a while. And there's not enough names on them yet. In preparing this sermon well before this, I'm actually excited about dressing up, and I want to be a wise man again because I feel that it makes me wise. <laughs> 
it's a role I've never been able to play before, and I have that opportunity. Nobody else, I mean, only guys want to do it, so I figure I can too. And standing there with an empty box and imagining that these men who were truly intelligent knew that Jesus was the King of Kings and they went to worship him and pay homage. They were not reluctant, they weren't forced, and they were cheerful. What service are you doing cheerfully? Because you want to, and it expresses thanks to God. Number seven, purposefully. 2 Corinthians 9, 8 says, God is able to make all grace abound. In other words, God will multiply and bless the gifts of those whose inward purpose and intention for giving is surrounded by grace. I purposefully wrote my name on, that na- on the live nativity. I purposefully blocked that time off in my calendar because I wanted to do that. You know, each one of us could do that if we wanted. We fill our calendars with parties and people and places to go and things to do. Have you purposefully given some time to something else? And number eight is private. Last week when we collected up the cards, I said that I didn't want to I don't see them. I I didn't have to share that with you. I just felt that I would. You see, in seminary and in other trainings that I've had, people are telling us, you need to know what your people are giving. Well, no, I do not. And I stand very firmly on that. Because it's between each individual and God. I give, and it's nobody's business what I give. It's really nobody's business how I spend all my time. You ask me to be your pastor and how I use my time, you have to trust that I'm in prayer about the things I do, the people I contact. Am I always smart about my time? No. Are you? (laughs) You don't have to answer that. But it's between us and God. And when we give in the right way, we know we're expressing thanks to God. 2 Corinthians 8 says this. Paul says, It isn't that we want others to have financial ease and you to have financial difficulty when you're giving. And remember, it's not just about finance, it's about time too. It's a matter of equality. This is God's economy. At the present moment, your surplus can fill their deficit so that in the future, their surplus can fill your deficit. In this way, there is equality. I am helping my kids right now as they begin their lives You've done that too. And then later when I'm old, I expect them to take care of me. When I'm older, they already say I'm old. But what a principle that is. What if we applied that to all the people just here in Marion? Wow. People would truly be equal. And that's what God wants. That's God's economy. One body, one spirit, one church. God sees all of us the same. It's so hard for us to do that. And number nine is the most important. We are to give ourselves. Once we have fully given ourselves to God, all the problems of giving financially, Uh, time, service, any way at all will be overcome. Why? 
Because we can give without loving, but we cannot love without giving. Would you like me to say that again? We can love, we can, we can give without loving, but we cannot love without giving. For God loved us so much that he gave all he had to give. His son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, God's indescribable gift, of mercy, forgiveness, salvation, and everlasting life. And today we express thanks to God through giving ourselves to God. So does your giving, the time, the talent, the treasure, yourself, Reflect expressions of thanks to God. What a wonderful thought as we go into the holiday season. Let us pray. Oh Lord, our God, we come before you and confess that we don't always give what we are able to do. We have our own ideas of what time we want to give and what effort we want to put into something. And yet it's in the very giving of ourselves that we express thanks to you. So Lord, empower us, open our eyes, open our souls and our minds so that we can recognize and grab the opportunities that will come to us to give, to give of ourselves and therefore express our thanks to you. In your wonderful name we pray, amen. Let us stand and sing our closing song. I will worship with all of my heart. I will praise you with all of my strength. I will seek you all of my days. I will follow. Let us pray. 
Lord, as we leave this place, let us look for opportunities to give so we can express our thanks to you. And we do give you all the praise and all the glory for you are the king and you rule this earth. So as we go out, Lord, go before us, behind us, beside us. And we ask this in the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And everyone says, Amen. Thank you.